What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be looking at a little god game called Immortal Mayor. Uh, this is a game that's set in Imperial China and you are a god who is trying to attract followers and build a city. Uh, you're trying to look after all the things your people need, such as like food and you know resources and all that kind of stuff. And I very much like that idea. There's not a lot of stuff that's kind of set in Imperial China effectively. And so I'm glad to see that that setting is getting a little bit more attention from the indie world. Uh, so anyways, we're going to dive straight on in today. We're going to play for about 25-30 minutes and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or not. I like that soundtrack. It sounds good, actually. I'm getting caught up listening to it right now just while I'm talking to you. Uh, anyways, we're going to play for about 25 minutes to see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list. Otherwise, pass on. I'll give you my thoughts about the game as we're going through. Things I think it could be doing better and things I think it's doing very, very well. And we'll see if it's a good fit. Okay? If after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I'll have a link for you down below. I think they're going to have a demo that they're going to be pushing to Steam at some point. And then aside from that, you can also find links to my Twitch stream where I frequently play the games in longer uncut formula than I do here on the channel. Now, these are like little mild impressions videos, whereas, you know, my streams, I'll dive in and actually hit it for like four or five hours straight so you can get a little further in. And then you can also check out my Discord. Let's start a new game. All right, so we get to choose between how many mountains we want, how many resources. We'll go with an average size world, I think. And then we'll leave. Oh, we got monster attacks? Hold on. I like the idea of monster attacks, but then again, I'm not familiar with the game since this is a first impressions video and it's off by default. So I don't know if it's going to be more of like a Sim City experience where you occasionally get attacked by like Godzilla or something, or if it's actually going to take on kind of like a tower defense bent if we go that way. Huh. Interesting. Well, maybe we'll check it out in future updates because this is kind of like the first build that they've pushed out. So let's just have a look at it for right now with the default settings and like maybe in later on plays when I've got a little bit more experience, we'll start playing around with the more complicated stuff like monster attacks. Alright, so welcome to Deity Town. As a new deity, you will lead your believers as they survive and develop in a bountiful and perilous world. As you gain more believers, your power will also increase until you become a real god. It's time to get started and good luck. Okay, alright, already feeling the music big time. I like the music a lot so far. Uh, it looks like we can rotate the camera with right click. It also looks like, oh, there's some kind of altar or something over there. Looks like we've kind of got like a mild assortment of islands, I guess? Well, maybe not. Maybe this is all interconnect- it is, okay. So that over there is kind of like a little peninsula, I guess. Alright. Well, I think we should start off over here by like this little lagoon. That's kind of what I like the idea of. Yeah. Let's do that. So it looks like we got some resources and things scattered around. Let's go ahead and place our town center here and just see how it goes. Uh, we'll put the town center sort of like right here. So there's our palace. And now we've got a bunch of little workers. All right. So let's have a look at them. Uh, over here we have Zhao Zhongyan. Sorry if I mess up any of the pronunciations, dude. As, as you might have guessed, I... I don't speak Cantonese or Mandarin or anything else like that, so I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna muscle head my way through it the best that I can, but you know, sorry about my pronunciations. I really like these little portraits right here, actually. These are really cool. I like them. Are there a lot of different ones? Oh, there are. Yeah, and the portraits actually match up with what their clothing looks like, too. It does indeed. That's actually a cool little detail. I like that. Nice. Okay. Oh, this guy, he's the badass. You can tell because he's got sideburns right there, dude. You can tell he's the troublemaker. He's that one on the edge of town being like, Hey, buddy, you want to buy this? Like, he's got that trench coat. All right, so we've got a lot of homeless people. So to start out, I suppose we'll think about putting down some houses. That seems like a good way to begin our little adventure. Looks like we've got a couple of different menus down here. Uh, so... It looks like you can befriend other deities with sacred statues that you can buy in the store or the lodge and boost your power. Okay, so we've got three ancient idols right now. And it looks like these two deities, so we've got Fengbo Yushi. Alright, so these two deities control the weather and you can and can help you create the best climate. We've got Wenku, who is obtaining blessings from this deity will activate the villagers' intelligence. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Oh wow. That go I thought there was only gonna be three or four. All right. Fair enough. Okay, uh, let's take a look here and see what we can do. Let's 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 stick to the simple stuff first. Building houses. I've done that in games before. Uh, I wanted to know what the spacing was gonna look like here. Looks like the initial spacing is off on the sides. I want to keep my roads going.
Okay, so initial spacing is going to be rough no matter what we do. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll just kind of improvise then. What I would like to do then is how is the spacing going to look over here if I wanted to have, like, maximum houses in? So it looks like that does work right there, which means that I think in order to make this all nice and purdy, we're going to have to go out like that right there. And we're going to kind of have to fork it out this way if we wanted to make kind of our little suburbs. All right, well, let's plop in a few more houses. That looks good to me. We have plenty of resources. At the top of the screen, it looks like we have food. Looks like we have wood. We have stone. We have metal. And it looks like we can also get fabric, clothing, tools. All right. So things to keep in mind as we're going forward is that we're going to need to get, like, all of these various things sort of sustainable, I suppose. Uh, we'll figure out what we want to do with this area in just a minute. I prefer not to have too many large gaps in my building process. Taking a look at industry, it looks like we have a lumber yard. It looks like we have a hunter's cabin. And it looks like we have a soul stone hut. I'm going to guess that these are soul stones right here. No, that's not bamboo. That right there. Fragile soul stones. Yeah, so that's a soul stone right there. I assume that the soul stones are in some way going to go into like our spiritual development or something. All right, so it looks like we can also unlock... Oh, you need soul stones to do research. Ah, good information to know. All right, well, then I'll keep that in mind. Let's speed this thing on up. What does this do? Security. So that's going to be our law enforcement right there. We've also got the nutrition that's going into each of our villagers. Now, we don't need builders or anything else like that for right now. The default villagers should go and start gathering the things they need from the stockpile in order to make these buildings over here. And in fact, you can see the first couple of them already working. And I think those animations look pretty tight, actually. I, I like the way they look. They've got kind of like a chibi flair to them that I think really, really works with the colorful, hyper-saturated art style that the game's going for. Deer animation could use a little bit of work right there. A little stiff, but I mean the human animations look really, really nice. Oh, are we like in a boss fight right now? Why'd the music change up on me? I feel like there's somebody monologuing right now while his hair blows in the wind before he pops off his like ultimate special ability. <laughs> You've underestimated my power. Like that kind of thing. All right. Uh, we've got the houses up and rocking. It looks like when a house is constructed, it looks like maybe two people live per house is what it looks like to me. So I think we're going to need a few more houses if we really want this to work. But that's okay because we're already set up for it. So let's get everybody housed. And then we'll figure out what we want to do from there. So there's two more houses right there, which I think should take care of the remainder. Actually, only one person moved into those. Okay. Uh, let's get our lumber industry set up. So I'd like to have a road over here. And I'd like for it to kind of run that way. And it looks like that rock is actually in the way. Oh, it is. Okay. I didn't expect such a small environmental piece to actually block off my ability to build. But that rock is harvestable. Okay. Uh, we'll put in a lumber yard, like, right... I feel like there's a better spot for it. Like, if we put it in, like, right there, I feel like that nestles a little bit better. Let's do that. Uh, we'll have this split off this way and go down to that large kind of rock right there. And I know this is going to look a little spaghetti-ish, but I think it's necessary. There we go. That works. Like, I'm not in love with the layout thus far, but anyways, man, the soundtrack really carrying right now. They've got, like, the, uh, they've, you know, they've the Urhus and everything playing, man. Sounds good. I actually, I really, really like the soundtrack. I can't, I keep catching myself kind of tapping my foot to it, in all honesty. My thing with Chinese folk music is that it's always very, very good at call and answer. Uh, so if you don't know what call and answer is, it's basically the resolution of the melody at the end of, like, a measure, effectively. And your ear actually, scientifically, this is a real thing. Uh, your brain craves the resolution of melody. We've actually, over like thousands of years of human history and making music, our brains are actually predisposed right now to hearing the resolution of a melody on like the fourth measure, basically. And so anyways, uh, Chinese folk music is always very, very good with the call and answer. If you don't know what the call and answer is, it's the dun na 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 It goes up, and then like when it finishes out the bar, it goes na 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 like, it's the call and answer. It's like the song asks a question, and then the following measure kind of returns the answer uh, effectively. And with Chinese folk music, it very much sort of uh, adheres to that rule set. For me, there are a lot of musical strictures out there that do not follow the call and answer in the pursuit of kind of being, like, unique. 
Uh, but like for me and my brain, unfortunately, my brain needs the melody to be resolved. Otherwise, it just drives me crazy. Are they going to build this thing at some point? Eh, eh, eh. Okay, they've delivered all the supplies. They're just working on the rest of it right now. There we go. And then after this, we'll figure out how it is that we assign jobs. I assume it's through the giant menu button right here that says Professions. So I'll pay special attention to that right at the end. Oh, wow, it's going to take a while to build. Okay. There we go. Our lumberjack is all up and ready to rock. So now we can assign workers to jack the lumber. And so I will send them forth to jack the lumber. Apparently we're shooting off fireworks over here. I have no idea what that means. Is there supposed to be... Oh, maybe they had a child. Maybe that's what the celebration was about. It looks like they had a kid, maybe? I think that's what it is. I think they shoot off a little firework when a new member gets added to the family. Nice. Okay, so that's another good thing to know. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to ignore the help for right now. We'll figure it out once we get moving. Like, I'm the kind of person that I don't really le read a lot of tutorials. And I know there's those of you that are rolling your eyes right now being like, I know. Uh, but that's just not how I learn. Like, I'm the kind of person that likes to jump into the deep end and just figure it out as I go. And if I mess it up too badly, I restart. And then, you know, I just keep repeating that process until I know what I'm doing. Uh, that's the way that I have fun personally. Uh, we do have a hunter's hut over here, but the range seems kind of limited on the work area. I'd like to have it somewhere where we know there's animals cruising around. Well, unfortunately, I don't see a whole lot of animals cruising, so hopefully they have like a little bit of, hopefully they have a little bit of means to get out there and go do other stuff. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the hunter's hut like, we'll put it right here. Cannot be placed there. Oh, is there something in the way? Hold on, let me rotate the camera. You can't rotate the camera while you're in the process of like placing built. Yeah, there's a little bamboo tree in the way. Okay, we'll put that right there, and then maybe we'll get the soul stone hut bumping too. Seems like an okay plan. There are soul stones right over here. Oh, dude, it's just perfectly not going to fit. Okay, well, maybe we'll go soul stone over here. I mean, it fits with our grid. Cannot be placed here. Why? But I want it. What's going on? It's that little tree right there, isn't it? It's that little tree right there that's causing the problem. Do I have like a manual clear tree button? Priority felling, there we go, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so we wanna like fell these trees over here so that we can get the soul stone thing in on this side and it can go gather from these little goodies over here. Will that tell the normal villagers to go ahead and do the wood chopping or does that actually move the lumberjacks? Well, the lumberjacks aren't built yet, so I assume... Yeah, it does. It sends the little generic villagers out. Yep, it'll send out the... Oh, I like him. He's got the little hay seed in his... Or he's got the little... He's got the little hay straw in his mouth. I like it. It's kind of funny how, like, around the world, there's always, like, some plant that's, like, sweet. Like, where I live, it's honeysuckle. When people work, they put honeysuckle in their mouth, and you just kind of suck on it, and it tastes kind of sugary and sweet, and you just keep that in your mouth all day while you're while you're working on a project. But, like, around the world, that's, like, a common thing. Like, every location has, like, a plant that you, like, stick in your mouth, you know what I mean, while you're working. <laughs> it sort of denotes that you're, like, a workman, effectively. The commonalities, I guess. Uh, that's the hunting house right there, so I assume the hunters. Can I move the work area of this? Or is the work area kind of like stuck? What does this button do? Okay, so that button opens that right there. I have no idea what that button does, but it doesn't seem to actually do anything. My guess is that they actually go outside the area where they want to be at. There's some kind of little deer over here. Yeah, there's a fawn over there. Maybe leave that alone until it grows up and has a couple has a couple babies. I do need this bamboo to go down, though. Especially, like, this little cluster right here. And until it does, I think we're going to be a little bit stuck on our building. Okay, so my god powers are listed. When I click right here, we've got, like, a bunch of different powers we can do. So we've got, like, play soul stones, for example. Uh, it looks like we've got create new people. And so we can get new villagers that just, like, spawn. We can move a building. We've got the guardian of the gods. And so I can put down a panlong pillar. I don't know what that is, but it sounds rad. Uh, building acceleration. Okay, so they'll build things faster. We've got another building acceleration right there. So I think maybe that's moderate and, like, large, maybe. And then materialism. Enlightens your villagers, resulting in them becoming materialistic. They become atheists, and the chance of them becoming believers is reduced. Okay, so why would I want my villagers to not believe in me? 
Okay. Okay, I mean, sure. Seems like there's some cool stuff in there. Uh, we need to get some soul stones, though, so we can start up on some research. That's what we need real bad. And I think as soon as this bamboo comes down right here, we'll be able to accomplish just that. All right, so they got our trees cleared out. We can finally put down our soul stone hut. Uh, we've got that all nice and smushed out right there. Oof, I love the way that that fits. Perfect. There's nothing better than a well-placed location. Uh, we may want to start thinking about food, too. It's already the harvest season, and so we've got fields over here. You must unlock seeds to plant them. You will get different seeds through trading or the lodge. The crop cycle has three phases. Planting, growing, okay, planting, growing, and harvesting. Gotcha. The off-season will take place during the growing phase. How big are these? Oh, it's actually like a painting tool. Oh, so we can make that as large or as small as we need it to be. Okay, yeah, put that right there. Do we get to pick what kind of seeds go inside of here? So the suited effect is nothing. It looks like we have wheat available for right now. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put out some wheat. That'll give us 420 of it. I don't know how many workers we're going to need, but it auto default set to two. So hopefully that's good enough. Uh, but we've got buildings to build and we've got constructions to erect here. So like I'm not really that were I probably should have had that go out one more so that it perfectly fit right there. Is there a resize button? Doesn't look like there's a resize button. It's okay. Uh, during the next winter, so the winter of year two, we'll bulldoze this and then we'll make it, we'll refit it to size. Because it looks like it's an instant building pattern anyway, so why worry about it? It looks like the plants are indeed going in. I do like how the farmer, oh, the little children are helping out too. Yeah, their kids help out with the planting. Cool. That's actually really, really rad. I like how the game is organized into family units, actually. I didn't expect the children to actually come out and help with the planting, but both those families have a kid, and their kids are in the field increasing the productivity as well. There you go. All right. Oh, the winter season's here. I wonder if that's going to wipe out the crops. The houses are upgrading, although by what mechanic they're upgrading, I'm not super sure. I think it has to do with maybe... Well, so it's got the same stats as the other houses next to it. Maybe it upgrades by virtue of the children being born, possibly? Oh, there's the soulstone miner, too. So apparently they like the prosperity and whatnot. I'm sort of wondering why some of these have moved over, though. They've moved over to, like, uh, shingled roofs instead of just having the thatched roofs right there. Like, they definitely did, like, a little sparkly effect and upgrade, and I assume it has something to do with these four stats, but they have, these buildings right here have the same stats. Actually, they don't. So these are actually worse. Huh. Curious. We'll keep an eye on it. So we've got a beginner house and a beginner house. They don't change name either, so it's kind of hard to pinpoint what's going to happen there. The higher the quality of the house, the more motivated the children will, they will be to have children. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take a look in the decorative menu. So this sells masks and props and also takes bookings for theatrical shows. Oh, and you can also put down, like, uh, big stone lions and whatnot. We can put in a millstone. I mean, putting that right next to the field is probably not the worst idea. A cherry boulder. The vermilion cherry tree has been absorbing the essence of the heavens since ancient times. It was dug up and made into accessories. Okay, so we also have a house loom right there. We can put in lamps as well if we desire to do so. Oh, and it looks like the houses actually have modularity slots. Yeah, so the houses, you can put in little... You can put in little doodads, effectively, to make the houses more prosperous. Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, I like that very much. Okay, so this is actually going to be fairly customizable with what you want your village to look like. Yeah. Are these costing me anything? No, it doesn't look like they're really costing me anything at all. Oh, actually, they cost me, so I can only put these in, like, once. Ah. So I have one of those. So at some point, we're going to have to buy and trade for these so that we can increase the prosperity and make the area look nicer. Gotcha. Well, that made these into intermediate houses, so that's good. Um, let's try to give these cats over here something good. Maybe give them... They've got a litter right there. Sure. Throw it in. Uh, the millstone probably should have put that in the corner right there. We've got the pond garden on this side. Does anybody else have a two slaughter left? I do not believe that they do. 
We've got an inkstone pond right there. Yeah, put in the stone lion right there, dude. I like the stone lions. The stone lions are cool. Oh, and that's all it took. Up go the houses, I guess. Nice. Okay. So what's going on with these over here? I'd like to get an idea of what's going on with the planting and the harvesting. But we're, we're lacking in, like, meters or anything that indicates exactly what's taking place here. I'm kind of wondering. It says, so farming and irrigation. I'm wondering if there's decorations that will allow me to irrigate or anything. It's kind of an interesting thought. It looks like we have soul stone guides over here. Are they actually gathering the soul stones? Oh, they are. We've got three soul stones right there. Let's jump into the technology menu then and see if we can research something. Uh, we can unlock the academy. So unlocking the academy will make our citizens more successful as they grow up. We have agriculture over here. So in the ag menu, uh, we've got to be god level two in order to get into that one. In the artisan menu, it looks like we can get a quarry. I think that's going to be important because we do need stone. And it looks like we've also got a storage building over here. I'm going to go for the quarry first, I guess. That sounds like the plan to me. Now, the game is using a push pause, which is tied to your thumb. Uh, so that's good. I always enjoy games that have kind of a push pause so that you don't get punished for like messing around and staring at the map a lot. My guess is that they're probably going over to this big soul stone pile over here to gather it. Yeah, I don't think they're going for that little guy yet, but maybe they... Oh, never mind. There is a little guy in there that's working on it. Okay. Fair enough. Hopefully the winter goes away pretty soon. It's kind of like frosty out here, man. We've arrived at the beginning of spring, so I think it's a really good idea to maybe go for a quarry. Especially in some of these areas where there's a lot of rocks around. And there's also ore over there. I don't know if the quarry will get the ore. I assume no. No. But masons will gather rocks nearby and transport them back to the village. Okay. Yeah, so let's put down our little mason lodge right there. Perfect. Uh, they'll clear out some of these rocks and get all this stuff out of the way so that we can start, like, developing that area. I think with all these trees I told them to chop down over here, they're probably going to be busy for a little while. I think the lumberjacks are actually walking all the way from the other side over to here to chop this. That is a feature that I like, actually. That's not a bad thing. It's just me pointing out that I'm being inefficient at the moment. Uh, do I have any decorations left that I can throw in front of this other house? There's a chessboard. Yeah, we can do that. Make it a little bit more prosperous that way. I don't know. I just don't want them to have thatched roof cottages anymore. I feel bad for them. Everybody else is living in, like, stone palaces at this point. And these one guys at the end of the road just, like, just been robbed. They don't get the good house. Ooh, this place is made out of, like, gold now. Sweet, dude. Nice. Pretty, pretty decent little city builder. Like, I, I think, like, with regards to some of, like, the UI and whatnot, there's still translational work that hasn't been completely and totally, like, finished off or whatever. Uh, like, things like the, the god power menu right here. I assume that they're going to leave that in for kind of effect. Uh, but, like, what does this do right here? Draw five samsara. Okay, so I can draw, like, a new grid of cards that I can play. Okay. I don't think we need new people right now. I think we're okay on that front. I may consider once I start seeing little homeless flags. Oh, look at that. The grain's coming in. Nice. Yeah. That'll refill our food nicely. We have 279 monster flesh. I don't think we should eat that. That seems like maybe it's going to be bad for me. Or like corrupt my people or something. I don't know, dude. I, I just I don't think that chowing down on some, you know, some Hades oysters is a great idea. I feel like it's going to backfire on us. Hey, your power has grown. You've made it through the most challenging period. Continue building and following, and you will become even more powerful. Okay, so apparently I got enough followers to where my god level went up. Very nice. How are we doing? We only have one generic villager left, too. So maybe, actually, using a god power to spawn some more people would not be the worst idea. Uh, yeah, give me some more people. There's five more people right there. Five more peepos that have been added to our civilization. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll move that in over there. And I'll put that in right there. And let's get the roads laid down. Perfect. And beautiful. Couldn't be better. There we go. I like it, actually. I like it a lot. Uh, obviously, there's going to be like, I don't, I don't know anything about kind of like, you know, Chinese deities or gods or the pantheon or whatever else. 
but like there's going to be a little bit of like a, a cultural situation there where I don't exactly understand everything that's going on, but I do like the mechanics of the buildings being modular and like when you place a house, it has slots where you can put like excess items in to increase its prosperity and whatnot. Like I really, really like that idea. And in fact, I think if they develop that with some of the production buildings too and whatnot, uh, that'd be a really, really cool idea. Uh, that I don't know if other games have really played around with. Like, obviously in the Anno games, you've got the idea that if you have certain goods and certain trade taking place, that people that live inside the radius of that commerce taking place will benefit from it and level up. But I don't know if I've ever seen a game where adding, like, looms and things like that to various houses make them kind of more successful and happier. And so, anyways, I like that. Let's take a look at the options menu before we close out. Uh, so, inside the main menu right here, the one problem that I do see... Is that maybe, does this go back to the menu right here? It does. Okay, so that goes back to the main menu. I was going to say there's no option to go back to the main menu, but it looks like that does it right there. Inside of our settings, uh, inside the graphics options, it looks like we can go with full screen and we can go with windowed. Whether or not that's borderless, I don't know. Uh, with resolutions, you've got a wide ray right there. The edge roll is turned on at the moment. Uh, that's going to be the edge scrolling, in case you were wondering. V-Sync is available. That's good. We've got shadow quality, texture quality, anti-aliasing, grasslands. Uh, so basically turning off these little patches of grasses and the frame rate, uh, frame rate limiter. So that's really, really good for people planning on capturing the game. Uh, inside of our other settings, inside the audio, we have a pretty simple split right here between music and effects. Uh, Language-wise, it looks like they are planning on adding more languages. We'll see how much it gets translated. And then it looks like... Can these be rebound? It looks like these can't be rebound yet, but it does have a default button, which seems to imply that it can be rebound. So maybe I'm just doing it wrong, or maybe it hasn't been implemented yet. I don't know, though. But anyways, Immortal Mare, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. I'll have something hot and fresh for you off the indie skillet tomorrow, and I'll see you all next time.